was like everyone else had heard that uh, there was a possibility of a trade. But beyond that, uh, I knew that I was at crossroads with my contract with the Oilers and that uh, either something was going to take place in, in June of 88 or June of 89. And uh, after the game, we had a Stanley Cup uh, party and get together. And at that time, I was informed that uh, Vancouver Canucks had made an offer and uh, that I may be heading there. And the negotiations had been going on for two or three months. And the next morning was a when I really realized that uh, I was probably finished as an oiler. Why did it happen and what were the reasons that, that, that it happened that I was traded and whose idea was it? And, um, I guess I would get asked an awful lot. Um, it's, I guess, a strictly business and, and, and uh, I know how the oilers operate and their philosophy is uh, no one's bigger than their organization. Um, no one ever will be bigger than their organization. Um, they build uh, winners there, they don't build tradition, and uh, I knew that. And uh, I felt that uh, I was going to control my own destiny. I didn't want to have to sign a, a longer contract and, and have them trade me at the age of 30 or 31 to somewhere I didn't want to play. And it became a business decision, and I understood that. And uh, I'm thankful because uh, I feel that I'm, I'm now playing an organization and for an owner that is first class, and I, I like that. I don't resent anything. I'm extremely uh, happy with the opportunity to play in L.A., and I'm extremely uh, happy with the way they, uh, uh, what they did for me over the 10 years and how they, how they handled me and all the good things they did for me. but. For me to sit here and say I'm best friends with them, that would be an out and out lie. After I met Mr. McNall, I felt that if I was going to move and leave Edmonton, that he was the guy I wanted to play for. He is absolutely the, the nicest man that, that I've ever met, um, a great heart. Um, he honestly takes care of, of each and, uh, and every player uh, the same way as equals. and. You know, Jimmy Carson will tell you that and all the things that he's done for Jimmy Carson after Jimmy Carson's been traded. Uh, I remember walking into his office and he said that he didn't want to trade Jimmy Carson, that he felt that uh, uh, he, he uh, felt that Jimmy was like a son to him. And I remember saying, well, if you want to back out of the deal, then, you know, that's fine by me. I, I, I understand the situation. And the fact that he cared about his player enough was, I remember saying to my wife that, Boy, I hope I can play for him because he's a great man. You know, we knew that, uh, that the uh, Oilers were going to try to put the onus on her and the fact that they wanted us to be together as a family. I, we, I knew that the day before it happened, and I remember saying to her, you know, you're going to take a lot of heat, and if we don't want to do this, I won't do it. And, uh, uh, you know, I guess my dad summed it up best, that, you know, it's the first time he's ever heard of a an owner doing an $18 million favor for a wife. It just doesn't happen in professional sports. And that's not a knock against the Oilers. It's just business. They, they, don't, they don't really care what the wives think or what the wives do. That's just the sport, the nature of the game. You know, just because I've come to California to play for the LA Kings doesn't mean I'm still not a Canadian, and it doesn't mean that I'm not proud to be a Canadian. I think that uh, the country is tremendous. The people have been great to me over my career. Um, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm, I'm deserting the land. I'm just uh, moving uh, to pursue my job. But uh, I'm proud to be a Canadian. I have, uh, always will be a Canadian, and I hope people understand that.